uh, session, I would like to uh, talk about uh, uh, some demos uh, and applications that I've developed using R, uh, which uh, touches upon some of the areas of data science and uh, machine learning and uh, has some interesting aspects. So let's get started. So the first uh, uh, app I would like to show is this app known as uh, uh, Sixer, which is an R-based uh, R pack uh, R app, uh, which was uh, based on an R package that I had created, known as uh, Cricketer. So let us look at uh, this uh, app. So uh, this app basically uh, is an app for analyzing the performances of the cricketers. So here I have uh, I, I plot uh, the runs versus the number of fours. Uh, that uh, Sachin Tendulkar has, uh, has scored uh, in test matches and uh, this data has been taken from uh, ESPN Crick Info and uses my R package cricketer so here you can see that uh, you have runs versus uh, number of fours and I plotted it and I plot a regression line uh, a nice smooth regression line and you can do this for other batsmen so for example you could do it for Rahul Ravan uh, which is this uh, then you can look at fours and sixes of uh, a specific batsman then uh, ground average what is the uh, average run scored by Rahul Ravid at uh, different grounds so this is essentially uh, a small R, pa uh, R app which is based on my uh, R package cricketer similarly I have the ability to analyze bowlers so you have Anil Kumble uh, here you have a box plots of the wickets taken and the runs he has uh, conceded for uh, the for three wicket uh, range for example you'll find that he has uh, conceded uh, between uh, uh, 48 and uh, almost 100 and uh, almost 100 runs uh, for three wickets similarly you can do it for other bowlers uh, and let's say couple day and you can take his uh, economy rate and that will uh, plot a couple day with economy rate so this is there for test one day in international and uh, 2020 so you can do this for uh, multiple things so the second uh, thing i would like to uh, 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 demonstrate is this nlp app what would shakespeare say uh, so this is again a uh, shiny app i uh, developed uh, using uh, nasal ne uh, smoothing algorithm and uh, cats back of algorithm so here let us take a look at this app uh, so here I have uh, a Shakespearean phrase hell hath no and the knees and knees smoothing gives a list of words the next words which uh, Shakespeare could have said he could have said less with a property of 0 0.66 uh, hell hath no tongue with a property of 0 0.522 whereas the other method that is the cat's back off with the additive smoothing it gives uh, hell hath no less uh, uh, as the word uh, with a 0 0.73 uh, probability and tongue with a probability of 0 0.73 so let us take uh, something which is more uh, we know a little bit more so let's say 2b uh, or you see uh, this uh, case uh, uh, gives uh, 2b or else Whereas additive uh, cats back of uh, this does predict not to be or not, and the next word after this would be two. Both of them give the word as two. So let us say two, and both of them give the next uh, word. Neither uh, gives uh, b with a product of 0 0.21, uh, or to be or not to the is uh, is, pro is, a, is a probability for this word. So we have we can. Uh, 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 create this uh, phrases. So again, this uses this uh, uh, again it uses this uh, uh, concept of uh, unigram, bigram, diagram. Finds the statistical probabilities of uh, different uh, uh, bigrams and then does some smoothing and uh, tries to predict the next word. So you have you can also choose a certain um, a set of uh, Shakespearean phrases. For example, you can choose sorrow tooth dot an example so we can see what Shakespeare would have said for this sorrow tooth dot let's take uh, cats back off we can say never the next word rankle 
So that is some uh, Shakespearean face. Another uh, thing, something which is more uh, uh, that we uh, do more often is to look at what we would say in today's English. You know, so this uh, app basically uses a corpus of uh, wikis, blogs, news news articles, tweets, etc., and uh, tries to create this unigram, bigram, trigram, quadgram, and tries to and computes the probability of the occurrence of the next word and uses two and I have done this again on two uh, different uh, uh, methods of smoothing one is the knesene and another one is additive smoothing so for example if I had a phrase this is so then knesene uh, 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 gives the next word as much uh, or this is not this property this is so good with uh, the property of 0 3 whereas uh, Katzbekov gives uh, this is so much with the property of 0 0.88 this is so good with the property of 0 0.3 and this is not with the property of 0 0.17 so let us take assume this is so much as the next word and then the, both of them give uh, the next word as more this is so much more let's take so much more fun the third word so much more fun then both of them give fun than the other so you can see that it is it uh, is able to predict the next word basically just on what the previous uh, set of words are and uh, it is all essentially statistical it doesn't know the structure of the statistics doesn't know uh, and use any grammatical rules or anything so this is the other one and another uh, interesting uh, uh, visualization I, I would show uh, this is pretty useful and this is uh, based on uh, a, a beautiful application uh, developed by Professor Hans Rosling of uh, Sweden uh, and he used uh, the data from World Bank and uh, you can actually look at uh, it is known as the gap minder chart it's very very famous and he has given a very famous talk so here for example if you take um, the the life expectancy on the uh, x-axis and here I will choose uh, the fertility then uh, you can see that uh, these are these red dots are actually the sub-saharan uh, or the, uh, the east uh, the African countries here uh, the fertility is very high and the life expectancy is low this is in the uh, year 1960 and uh, these uh, blue are the East Asia Pacific and the Europe and the Central America the Fertility is somewhat uh, less, and but the life expectancy is pretty high. So we can do this. We can play this as a dynamic uh, chart. So you can see that uh, the uh, <coughs> the life expectancy of almost all countries uh, increase, and the fertility also uh, correspondingly decreases over the years. So this is a very interesting chart. So next, let us take another thing, like for example. Uh, total population and uh, poverty and I will uh, try to uh, select some countries here I will select let us say uh, China and maybe uh, Ghana and maybe India So you can see that uh, the population, uh, okay, you have to start from here. The population of China uh, is here, and uh, okay, let's play this. Uh, you can see that uh, the poverty in China is dropping very fast. India is, uh, you know, uh, relatively slow at the poverty level. Whereas Ghana, it is uh, the population is not increased, but it is uh, still pretty high. So this is how it looks like and you can, you can do it uh, display it here as line charts so you can see China the uh, <coughs> poverty headcount has dropped pretty significantly India to a certain extent and Ghana also has uh, dropped to uh, some other ex a little other extent then uh, let us take uh, maybe uh, and 
life expectancy how does gdp correspond with life expectancy and maybe i will choose uh, uh, some other uh, interesting uh, countries maybe i will choose germany okay so let us take this uh, so here in uh, in 1960s uh, so let us look at this the life expectancy uh, you can look at it here probably it will it'll be better so life expectancy of uh, China and Germany are much uh, very high pretty good uh, uh, versus the uh, GDP so these are the main three a couple of uh, demos I wanted to show uh, which uh, data science actually uh, is helpful in exploring and visualizing data and uh, other thing is uh, there are many platforms if you're interested in data science there are many many platforms where you can go and explain for example you can just uh, download and install R studio which are which is an open source uh, software similarly you can use Python for data science which is again open source and you can install it and uh, play around with it if you want to use a Spark, uh, Apache Spark, you can go to Databricks or use a Jupyter Notebook or you can also try IBM's Data Science Experience. And Data Science is pretty hot and there are many competitions uh, where uh, you can actually uh, come up with interesting algorithms uh, and uh, actually win uh, uh, prizes. And finally, I would like to uh, close up with you know where I've taken a lot of this material from. Uh, some of them are, the first one is machine learning from uh, Stanford at Coursera by Professor Andrew Ng. It's a very useful course, I've taken a lot of uh, material from that. Another one is statistical learning, this is uh, from Stanford Online by Professor Hasty, Trevor Hasty and uh, uh, Tisha Browney. Uh, uh, so this is another interesting course, uh, it's on statistical learning. The third one is on data science and engineering with Spark from University of California, Berkeley. Then uh, other courses are data science specialized in uh, John Hopkins University. And finally, you can look at my blog uh, where I have uh, a lot of uh, posts uh, on data science and uh, using R, uh, etc. And my packages, uh, cricket packages, etc. So finally, quickly just recap. I just touched upon uh, in front of the uh, <coughs> Apache agent, uh, which is analytics of the edge, and then I touched upon uh, natural language processing where you ingest a corpus of text and then uh, find out the uh, <coughs> maximum uh, pro uh, likelihood estimate for uh, unigram, bigram, trigram, quadrigram, etc. in grams and then use that to predict the next word. And finally, we touched on Apache Spark where the <coughs> processing happens in memory. So that's it. Uh, so this is the last and final uh, video on this. Uh, uh, machine learning, data science, NLP and uh, big data, a cognitive uh, melting point. Thanks for listening.